Hey, yeah. Daryl Jones, this was nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, welcome to the world of vintage guitars, yes, which is a, a beautiful room here <laughs> full of um, great instruments. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And before we talk about your instruments, mm -hmm. which of course is Jones yeah. uh, instrumental, um, I wanted to ask a few questions about sure. first you come uh, from Chicago. Yes, yes. From a musical family? Uh, yeah, in, in a way, definitely. My father uh, was a drummer, mm -hmm. uh, played a little bit in the service, not a lot professionally, but, you know, had, you know, serious love of music, lots yeah. of, you know, Miles Davis and wow. Count Basie and Oscar Jazz. Peterson in the, in the house. Yeah. And then my mom yeah. loved, uh, you know, soul music, Sly and the Family Stone. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, Otis Redding, you know, yeah. you know, all of that stuff. So, yeah. And yeah. I, I guess uh, Chicago is a very uh, vibrant city when it comes to music. It is. It really is. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I know of the Chicago blues uh, yeah. background yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so that, that, yeah. that has been around you, I, yeah. I, I no. assume. Yeah. I mean, despite the fact that by the time I came around, you know, came onto the scene, yeah. There was no real the record companies had closed. Chess Records, Brunswick had all closed. Yeah. But there were still all of these great musicians. The musicians around. were still there, and some yeah. clubs probably. Yeah, from, yeah, from, quite from, a number, quite yeah. a number. So the, the, the live before. venues were still there. Yeah, yeah. The industry kind of changes a lot. Yeah. I mean, it does. Especially it does. over the last whatever twenty yeah. years with the digital yeah. revolution and right, things yeah. like that. Exactly. But hey, you have been super fortunate to play with, I think, the greatest. Um, musicians of several genres. Mm. Miles Davis as mm. a, a jazz god. Mm. I would say Miles is, uh, yeah. you know, one of those yeah. outstanding musicians in that genre. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. And um, then you had uh, played with Sting. <laughs> yeah, we did that for a little while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I know a little bit about Sting, uh, that he is influenced by jazz too, but I think He is more like a pop musician, you know, in, in, mm. uh, with different roots. But um, I would consider him, you know, uh, the king of, it's, he's not the king of pop, but he mm. is kind of a very, very um, outstanding musician creating mm. new uh, music in the genre. Of, you know, it's interesting because when I think about Sting, he's yeah. a guy who has a distinct um, outlook on music, uh -huh. and when he takes from another genre, for instance, the police obviously heavily influenced by ska yeah, yeah. and reggae, reggae. And, and, yeah. you know, and that kind of stuff, and then so he creates his version of that music. Yeah. And then when he does Brazilian music like Fragile, yeah. he creates his direction of that rock and roll, synchronicity yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. He seems to be able to move his sensibility around to several different kinds of music and it creates this kind of sting music. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So he's really brilliant in that, yeah. and incredible lyric, lyricist. And, yeah, yeah, And a yeah. good bass player, you know? I of mean, course. <laughs> people, people sleep on that, but I think he's a really great bass player. And I've, 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 I can imagine it's very hard to play the bass and sing on top of that, yeah, no, having yeah. this kind of syncopated lines. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't do that. Yeah, no, there's a few guys who are really great at it. Yeah. Obviously, Paul McCartney's yeah. great at it. Larry Graham is also yeah. great at it plays all of this great slap stuff and yeah. sings incredibly, you know. So yeah. Stang is among those guys who can, you know, who can, who can pull it off, you know. Yeah, cool. And then um, you played with, the, or still play with the Rolling Stones. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. uh, of course, rock, probably rock gods, you know, some of the um, inventors of rock in a way, you mm -hmm. know. I, I think all these, like three people, you. Uh, played with or bands you played with they are on the forefront of mm -hmm. pushing the boundaries of mm -hmm. that musical genre yeah that's true so that's so true. It, for me it's impressive that you kind mm -hmm. of bam made it to the top in three genres yeah now it's interesting how you know yeah how things turn out but again i really do think it goes back yeah. to being in a in a household where there was more than one kind of music yeah. you know when i was learning You know, the, the, guy, the guy who first taught me, Angus Thomas, when he first f was first teaching me, he taught me uh, Led Zeppelin tunes. He taught me uh, uh, sta uh, Staple Singers t yeah, tunes. Yeah. He taught me a War, you know, a yeah. lot of different things. And I think, and, and of course, I had my dad whispering in my ear, you better learn how to play some jazz. So, you know, I think that it kind of, in a way, prepared me 
to go out and and uh, and, and to work. Be a few ready for for yeah, for that a few different genres. A big yeah. spectrum, right. actually. Yeah, yeah. Any contact with classical music? Uh, yeah, in high school. In high school, ah. I did play with a with a high school orchestra. So you also and play I, the upright bass I and do. reading. Uh, I I do. Yeah. Um, wow. It's I, you know I don't do a lot of that anymore. Uh, but but I did. I was yeah. I studied with a very good teacher, mm -hmm. a guy named Harold Siegel in Chicago uh, when I was a teenager. Yeah. So yeah. A little bit of that, you know. And I love I love classical music. I love I'm 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 uh, Ravel right now. I'm I'm totally oh, yeah. into Ravel right now. Okay, yeah. oh, how cool. If you compare, I mean, these three different genres, these th three different characters, is there anything totally different, or what is maybe similar, and what is different? How these bands approach their music? Well, I think uh, for for me, I think the the what helps is that I just look at the song, whatever yeah. the song is. And so if it's with Steps Ahead and it's a fusion song yeah. or, you know, for lack of a better word, electric jazz song that requires, you know, some a little bit more facility, then I just try to play that song the mm -hmm. best that I can. Mm -hmm. If it's with the Stones and it's rock and roll or blues, yeah. I just try to play that song yeah. the best way I can yeah. with, you know, with with uh you know, and be uh, authentic to the blues or be authentic yeah. to rock and roll. And don't overplay and, yeah, and yeah, kind of yeah. show off, yeah. uh, which doesn't help the song and exactly, the music. Exactly, because in rock and roll, it's not a bass solo. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's in, the groove. You know, in electric jazz, yeah. there's more room for that. And so yeah. then I, you know, you know, utilize, you know, some yeah. other kind of stuff a bit more. But uh, no, I think that you can't really go wrong if you just try to serve the song, whatever kind of music you're playing. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I, I mean, it, this is what the audience is looking for. Mm -hmm. they, are, uh, they are watching a band play, playing music. Yes, it's yeah. about the music. Yeah. And yeah. if there is uh, uh, virtuosity inside the music required as part of the concept, fair Then, enough. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Paganini I or, you yeah. know, you name it. In, right, you right, know, right, yeah. you played with the, the greats uh, of fusion and jazz. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, um, that, that element is important in that yeah, kind of music. Absolutely. But absolutely. In, in the Rolling Stones, I guess it is uh, to, to get the... It's a bigger maybe wave that you have to create as a band, mm -hmm. yeah, teaming yeah. up with a drummer right, and yeah. getting the groove established yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for the mm -hmm. exciting vocal performances and right. show. Right, exactly. And, yeah. Yeah, I think. and you also um, started your own band or are you... Uh, for the moment, I've, yeah. I've not been doing that, but I do plan to get back to it, you know, end yeah. of the year begin and, and, and definitely next year. I've done a number of... Uh, Projects that you know that I'm going go back and forth with. Uh, there's a really great guitarist named Jean Paul Borelli, who's also out of Chicago. We grew up together. Yeah. He and I and Will Calhoun have a rock trio. Cool. Yeah. Um, I play uh, you know another band, Three Brave Souls, with uh, one of the keyboard players, John Beasley, that played with mm -hmm. uh, with Miles Davis, and also a drummer who uh, recent recently we lost, uh, mm -hmm. and and Dugu Chancellor. But we have a, a kind of soul jazz trio. Oh, nice! Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, I've been doing some stuff on my own, singing a little bit, and uh, and uh, performing some of the songs that I've written over the last, you know, twenty twenty five years. Yeah. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm interested in all of that. I took a little bit of break, a little bit of a break uh, to start, you know, trying to build instruments. So I've been away from the, you know, from from my own band for a while, but I'm going back to it. Yeah. In the year. So, so besides the bass, you play the guitar. I don't consider myself a guitar player But as much as uh, uh, I, I do use the guitar as a tool to okay. write. You yeah. Know? Uh, Piano? Um, uh, again, okay. you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. Like a, I'm like a carpenter with a hammer. Okay. <laughs> you know? I use the piano as yeah. a, you know, yeah, functional. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. I can, you know, I, you know I, can pl I play guitar well enough to lay down a, 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 a nice, you know, rhythm Chords guitar part and, 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 and you know, yeah, and keep like, the same thing yeah. with piano. Mm -hmm. um, like my friend Victor Bailey used to say, I can't sing that well, but I can punch my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, super cool. And um, now you, you are creating your own instrumental mm -hmm. um, instrument brand. Yeah. Um, so when did you start that project or that company? Well, uh, quite a number of years ago, um, uh, a builder named Albi Balgoshin, Mm -hmm. built an instrument for me it's very kind of unusual carved top 
a flame maple. It doesn't have any magnetic pick pickups, and it's got a transducer mm -hmm. under the wooden bridge that mm -hmm. he built. This mm -hmm. is a you know, complete, completely custom instrument. Mm -hmm. Well, we did that one together, and after a few years, we started looking at the price of pre-CBS fenders going up and up and up. Through the roof, yeah. And we were thinking, you know, you know, a kid who's, you know, who's, you know, works at McDonald's, he's never going to be able to afford no. yeah. a 66 jazz bass, you know. Yeah. So we decided, let's make something that's kind of influenced by those instruments. Yeah. But that is a little bit more affordable you know, within, you know, yeah. within the, the, you know, the, the, the range of, of a kid who could work at, you know, you know, fast food restaurant for a year or two and be able to afford an instrument like that. So we came up with the instrument that eventually became the instrument we licensed to Lakeland. Okay. And so we worked on that instrument for quite a while before we, uh, before we uh, put it out on our on our on our own, and then went with Lakeland to you know, license it to Lakeland. Mm -hmm. So that's what really started, started. the spark yeah. for me of designing instruments. Um, and then a number of years later, I was teaching at Musicians Institute in right. Los Angeles, yeah. and somebody told me, he "says You know, now that you've taught here, you can take any course." And I remembered a guy at the Fender Custom Shop. Dave, I can't remember Dave's last name, but yeah. he told me, he says, uh, you know, there's a, a luthier uh, course. A course. Ah, so you, you took so the I class took the, I took the course. Yeah. I didn't finish it because, of course, I got called for a gig <laughs> and I had to <laughs> leave town, you know. Boy, boy. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah. But I did come back in time to build yeah. my, my, my uh, first instrument, of, you know, the, yeah. built an instrument every semester. Mm -hmm. And after uh, I built it, I took it to the head of the department, mm -hmm. a guy named John Carruthers, who's been building and working and repairing for everyone. There's nobody who I've played with who he doesn't have a story about, oh, I've worked for him, <laughs> yeah, Stones, yeah, yeah, Keith yeah. Richards, Stank, yeah, you know, he's yeah. worked with everybody. Uh, and uh, so that's where Jones Musical Instruments started. We right. built that instrument, I went on the road and started playing it with the Stones and decided that I wanted to, you know, to get into it. And I, you know, as, as kid, as kids, you know, you, you, you love guitars. Of course. And I think we've never grown out of it. No, I think we no. All, it, you know. It's a bug that never stops. Yeah, you know. Uh, so when, when you work on your instruments, what is kind of your philosophy? What is kind of important to you? Yeah. And uh, I mean, yesterday when, when we spoke about whatever, mm -hmm. the, 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 f the fretboard radius, for yes. instance, yeah. is like you, yeah. you, you kind of like the vintage radius. Yeah. And, and yeah. why? I think because I grew up playing Fender instruments. Yeah. I really think that it's I, I muscle have, memory yeah, in your hands. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I think, you know, just generally speaking, yeah. um, I grew up playing, you know, Fender Mustang, 19, probably 60s, 69, 70 Fender Mustang with the competition yeah. stripes. Yeah. And, uh, and then later on a jazz bass. Uh, I think that, you know, the uh, Leo Fender and the guys who worked around him, when we look at, you know, the instruments that are still around today and are still popular today, he got a lot of stuff right. He got almost everything right. For me, he is, you know? he's, he's actually uh, almost a genius. Yeah, If absolutely. you look back at what has been there before, mm -hmm. and for instance, like I'm a Strat guy, that's my 61 yeah. Strat. Oh, it's beautiful. It's like... You that's age, beautiful. Yeah. probably the same month, we don't know. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> um, that's I should instrument. clean it, but anyway. Mm -hmm. um, if, if I look at this instrument, you know, with the contour body, mm -hmm. with that synchronized tremolo, and I mean, I play that instrument still up to today, yeah. Yeah. and I would have other choices, but I don't want them because yeah. th the instrument is right, the character is there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also the mechanical solutions he had for the hardware, they are very clever. Right, yeah. And uh, if you know how to set those up, um, uh, they, they still work. Yeah. The, the yeah. only thing I do is like for my extreme bending, I, I, I kind of make it a compound radius oh, in, right. the, in the mm -hmm. upper range. Right, yeah, which, uh, which makes sense, yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. And so basically the same kind of thing that you're, that you're saying, mm -hmm. an instrument based on real tradition, yeah. With a few tweaks, modern tweaks is yeah. basically what what you know my philosophy. Yeah, on, and that on comes from your player so. background. Yeah, yeah, because you've yeah. been there. You yeah, no, absolutely. You, you know what, you know you have you played several different instruments, yeah. and you you know ah this one. Yeah, absolutely. And and interestingly enough, we were talking about Leo Fender. Um, he didn't play, but he would hand the guy a guitar and ask him 
what's right with that? Yeah. What's, and the, if you notice, the first question that I asked you after you played that guitar yeah. yesterday was, you said, no, man, feels good. I said, yeah. what, 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 how could it be better? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the that, question that. I think that we continue to ask. Yeah. And if you do that and you follow great players, because I mean, I grew up playing basses. I didn't grow up playing guitar. So I've put my guitar in Mike Stern's hands. I've put it in, yeah. you know, a number of really great guitarists' yeah. hands to try to understand better what is right for them. Exactly. And so I yeah. think that, you know, with that kind of philosophy, I think that that's how Leo Fender went far. And I, I'm hoping that, you know, the same thing will be true for me. Of course. I mean, it's like uh, looking at all the instruments, I can see the results mm -hmm. um, with that respect to the past. Mm -hmm. So it still feels comfortable yes. from, from your whatever from where you come from right. from your heritage exactly but um it you know you forget about the instrument and you start to make music exactly once you yeah. are in the zone right and if the instrument is right uh that's all what matters exactly and uh you know these 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 are the details if something is like weird is like it doesn't help. Right, exactly. It, it, it's, it, it gets keeps you, you out of the zone. zone. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. anything that's toward that um, philosophy is, su is super important. And mm -hmm. so the feel of the instrument needs yeah. to be right. Um, you seem also to have a, uh, a big color thing going on. Yeah, I did colors. <laughs> we, we talked yeah. about this Some color. Some more than others. But <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but it, I think it's also important in a yeah, way. It is. Because it, it sets the mood. Yeah. A, a, a color is, is mood. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, no, it's the atmosphere. Right, right. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and this, this is kind of a, a mud finish. Yeah. Um, and what's the color? Uh, it's called mineral gray. It's mineral actually, gray. It's actually uh, it was taken from a BMW color. <laughs> I, I, for a while, I drove a BMW M3, yeah. which I still really miss. <laughs> uh, well, but, I, I do have a, a BMW 3, but uh, mine is boring black. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Don't use that color. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, this is a this is a, or at least inspired by yeah. the miner, mineral yeah, gray sure. from BMW. So we call it mm, mineral, mineral gray, gray, but this is mineral gray with a matte finish. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, matching headstocks. Yeah, that, yeah. That's that's another thing that was, uh, even though the first Fender uh, jazz bass that I played wasn't didn't have a matching headstock something about the 1966 jazz basses Ooh. with matching headstocks magic was a thing for yeah. me so i i think when i think about how many i don't know how many bases i've made now but i've only made one with a natural headstock mm -hmm. and it's a it's like a precision sunburst yeah. type yeah. instrument well it's, it's been Talking about Fender basses and like, are you the jazz guy, jazz uh, bass guy or the P bass guy? Well, you know, early on, yeah. uh, the jazz bass. Yeah. Uh, because I was playing music that was a little bit more electric jazz, yeah. a little bit more, yeah. you know, pronounced tone, a little bit, you know. But then as I got into playing more rock and roll, then I moved over to a P bass. So I use both for, mm -hmm. for, 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 for all sorts of things now. Right. But... Uh, yeah, I'm probably in rock and roll, probably a little bit more of a, a P. -bass. I also, you know, the Fender Mustang, man, is another instrument okay. that I've kind of gone back to. Uh, there's something about the string tension that changes when it's with uh, a short scale. Short scale, yeah. And uh, like with the Stones, I use a I use a a, a bass just like the one mm -hmm. that I grew up playing, red competition, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, competition red yeah. with the stripes. Yeah. I found one in a store. Mm -hmm. And uh, literally, I looked up at the at the wall, and I was, the store owner was a friend of mine, Kenny. Uh, yeah. I said, "Man, is that how's that? Is that bass play well?" And he says, "All the way up and down." And I said, "You must take it off the wall. I have to have it. I have to have yeah. it." And I started playing it on like uh, Satisfaction. Yeah. And Start Me Up. Yeah. And some of these tunes, and of course, Bill Wyman, yeah. the original bassist yeah. with the Stones. So he played short scale basses a lot, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, so I think there's a sound there. So it, it, it's maybe um, more melodic in a way. I, I mean, yeah. melodic is the right, uh, it's not maybe, the, but it's not as low. Yeah. It, so it has kind of a different mid range to it. Yeah, Scott, I, there's something about the way the mid range uh, 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 speaks. Speaks, yeah. You know, and, uh, and with a pick and some yeah. flat wound strings, it's you can that, really get to some stuff, you know, yeah. and it, it it projects in a different way than the bigger basses do. Yeah, know? yeah, And it's yeah. perfect for some of that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. It, and, and the instruments 
uh, the, the choice of the instruments are so important to mm -hmm. make a band sound great. Yes, I okay. mean, you you know, whatever chops you play, if if the sound is yeah. not right, yeah. you, you you kill yeah. the, the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. so so for me, uh, tone and sound is so important, mm -hmm. and and the the ear or the awareness mm -hmm. uh, what to do that that makes yeah. a, a band sound great right and that I, goes I back to your philosophy yeah mm -hmm. do the song right play for it, the song yeah choose the in fact that's what I do I choose an instrument yeah for the song, song you know so yeah I wouldn't uh, you know I wouldn't you know play a five string active active electronic instrument yeah on uh on the a rolling old, you know on a yeah. rolling stones tune, no you know? no it, it, it just doesn't different seem right. yeah. different yeah. To totally different world yeah yeah of yeah. sounds yeah. hey daryl mm -hmm. i think this was super fascinating oh, man, insights absolutely. yeah um yeah we we are um we are happy to see these instruments here at the number one yeah, store man. in hamburg yeah. Um, of course, all the guys should check out your website. Yeah. Um, and of course, if you have the chance to see him live. Yes, man, indeed. And we're going to get a chance to play a little bit later this week. So sure. I'm looking forward to it, man. I always love playing with okay. you. Okay. Hey. All right. Cheers. Mm -hmm.